WCNC TV Charlotte. This is Flashpoint. Good Sunday morning and happy new year, everybody. Thanks for joining us here on Flashpoint. I'm Ben Thompson. It is going to be a big year politically. The RNC coming to Charlotte. We're waiting to see who's going to be the Democratic presidential nominee. And if President Trump will still be in office by the time the election rolls around. Plus, can Tom Tillis keep his seat and will other Republicans here in Mecklenburg County be able to win theirs back. We're taking a look at all these things and probably a lot more on top of that coming up in the next half hour. Joining me today to talk about all of it and share their predictions about 2020, political science professors. Michael Bitzer from Catawba College, Susan Roberts of Davidson, and Scott Huffman of Winthrop. Usually the three smartest people in any room at a given time. So <laughs> this could be dangerous. <laughs> or it could be very educational, hopefully. <laughs> First, I want to talk about impeachment. As of this taping, the House is set to impeach the president. Democrats allege the president abused the powers of his office by urging Ukraine to announce investigations into Joe Biden and withhold military aid to try and force what he wanted. Republicans pointing out no one testified about a direct order from the president, but pretty close. And now in the new year, things move on to a Senate trial where the president is likely to be acquitted unless something changes. All right, Scott Huffman, I'll, I'll begin with you. Uh, how is this uh, going to play out in the Senate? Well, I, you, know, you made a, a stunningly important point there that everybody needs to remember. Impeachment is not removal. Yep. Um, he's going to be impeached by the House, the democratically controlled House. Um, did he do these things? Yeah. But... Uh, is it impeachable? Yes, because whatever the House feels like is impeachable is. Impeachment is a wholly political process. Um, to make a distinction there, it's not a criminal. No, it's, it's, it's not like absolutely a court. Not, not, yeah, absolutely. absolutely not. Uh, you can think of it as impeachment as the indictment and okay. removal as the trial. However, it is not a criminal procedure. Uh, the only end is perhaps being removed, which is not criminal. So it's going to go to the Senate and he's almost, he's certainly going to be acquitted. And the question is, who will this drag down? As we move to the 2020 election, will it be seen as, oh, the president was acquitted. These Democrats, you know, uh, did something to waste our time. Or will it be seen as, oh, he clearly did these things, but the Republicans let it go. So the question for impeachment is, who's it going to hang on? But let's be honest, he is going to be impeached, but he will not be removed. Susan Roberts, do you agree with that? Any way that anything else could happen in the Senate besides that? Well, I think people are going to vote on two things. And one is conviction, and the other is protection of their seat. Because I've had people say, what's the use in impeaching him? Because he will not be convicted. And I think it has to do with sometimes members of the House and the Senate look themselves in the mirror and say, this was not a good thing. It was impeachable. And when we bring up the framers, uh, the framers did not give a framework. I mean, they really just said, here are some things you need to figure out. Uh, treason, bribery, high crimes, and misdemeanors, um, they're there. The question is, as um, Scott points out, what will the impact be? What will the fallout be? What will it be? I think certainly for the Republicans, it is all about loyalty to the president. Not so much loyalty to the party, but because Trump is now the party, that's where the loyalty goes to. I think for the Democrats, they will argue we had to uphold the constitutional integrity of the office. And even though they will see this through the respective political lenses, the public has to understand that this is the ultimate checks and balance in terms of can a president push the envelope so far that Congress uh, abates its responsibility to ensure that the president isn't abusing his, maybe one day her, power in that regard. Yeah, and you know, impeachment is the ultimate constitutional <laughs> check. It is. It is entirely legitimate. It is not quote unquote overturning an election or a decision. No matter um, when it happens, whether no, it's the right. first year or the fourth year. Irrespective yes. of when it happens, it is entirely legitimate. But uh, you know, to Michael's point, 
it's it's the people and how they get their information on it. We are now so siloed in mm -hmm. our news. This is not like three networks back in 1974. Yeah. This is, I will get my news from a single set of sources that only reinforces my beliefs, which makes it fundamentally different from the way the public got their news about Nixon. And remember, when Nixon started going through the impeachment process and ultimately quit before he was fully impeached, um, the public was on Nixon's side. Mm -hmm. Interesting. We know how Lindsey Graham will, will come down on this. We, we are increasingly see how Tom Tillis falls on, on this issue. Any chance there's a, a senator like Burr or other Republicans in the Senate that might defect? Yeah, Burr might be the, the ultimate linchpin. Uh, I don't think he pulls many more senators because yeah. he has the stature and he also has the fact that he's not running for re-election <laughs> again the, in 2022, the, the biggest, so that, the, the that helps. Issue. Yeah. But you know, he has been chair of the Intel Committee, the Senate Intelligence yeah. Committee. He and Mark Warner know just as much as the House does, as any other senator does. But the likelihood is it would have to be somebody by, like a Mike Lee or maybe even a Ted Cruz mm. that would have to say this has gone too far for the dam to really break. But I think if you look at um, Tom Tillis tiptoed into disagreeing with Trump in that Washington Post yeah. column and you see what happened to him. I mean it gave you Garland Tucker, it gave you ads against him. So I think you think twice if you're a Republican and you want to keep your seat whether it's 2022 or whenever to go against uh, Donald Trump and the party and um, and really what he says every Republican should stand for. Yeah, we're going to get more into the Tom Tillis race coming up in a little bit. What, what does this mean for the president going forward after after this? Assuming he's acquitted in the Senate, what kind of presidency does he have for the next well, eight, well, ten first months? Off, I, remember that the, the millisecond the Senate votes not to remove him, yep. he's going to yell, Acquitted, 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 acquitted. I was proven yeah. innocent. In the same way, he screamed no collusion after yeah. the, the Mueller report, uh, even though that's not what the report said. Yeah. Uh, and so he's going to move forward. His entire coterie of, of supporters are going to line up behind him. We are simply moving into as partisan an affair for 2020 as we were going to have before, just with different colored tomatoes in their hands to throw at each other, frankly. Um, the best part of all this is that the Republican convention is coming to Charlotte, yeah. just like the Democratic convention did before. And it's gonna be wonderful for us, not just in terms of, of money and hotels, it's simply gonna be awesome for political science. <laughs> for the geeks like us. Right. I'll see a lot of you guys that week. We're just right. across the line. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, does this make him a stronger candidate? I think it does make him a stronger candidate because what he has said throughout this is, um, it is because of election uh, when he won and in 2016. He, it echoes in the course that he's used. If you watch some of the hearings that these are uh, intellectuals, you should not let your children go to Harvard. And it plays into that anti-elite Washington, no one hears you. And so I think this, the impeachment is a lovely way for him to keep reiterating. And as Michael said, you don't have just the networks, you have, of course, Twitter. So he can, this is a mantra for him. Yeah. I think it, it certainly rallies his base and solidifies his base behind him. The question I have going into 2020 is how big is his base? Yeah. If he's sitting at approval ratings of low 40s to barely 45%, I'm loath to name another president who has been able to win a reelection with that low of popular approval ratings. Yeah. But we have never before had a situation with such strong negative partisanship. Shh. So you look Very at the score so. a little over yeah. a third yeah. who are never going to vote for anybody yeah. but him and they'll do it with you know vigor and then the, the rest of the folks who might say I don't like him, but dear God, not the Democrats. Okay, yeah. We have never faced negative partisanship like this. To that point, who will he face? We'll talk about the Democrats on the other side of this break.